hi guys how are you doing i'm mohammed sadri this is the second video i am creating uh, for zinc ultra scale plus and petalinux series this one is a very simple video um, maybe you don't need to watch it it can be interesting however its title is software setup under linux and jtag connection and in this video I try to also cover uh, the cases in which you are running Vivado um, not directly in your host system but you have a virtual machine Linux is installed as a guest inside the virtual machine and then Vivado is running there this is a case many people have here software versions um, that we use Obviously, we use everything under Linux, um, Vivado and Peta Linux. Both will be installed and will be used under Linux. And also, as I will show you, we, we may need Vivado lab solutions. So during this video, I show you how to install Vivado and Peta Linux um, under Ubuntu. For many people, the case is they have a laptop they have a computer and the computer is running windows 10 windows 7 something like that and this is this is they can't change this um, so they can't uninstall the windows they have to keep the windows because there's a it policy the company doesn't allow linux to be directly executed on a pc because they want to control the content so the solution many times is to install a simple virtual box a simple virtual box then install ubuntu under the virtual box and then to run everything here so in this video i will i will do kind of the same so my host in this video is linux it's not windows but under linux i am running virtual box and then inside virtual box i am running a ubuntu and there i will install vivado Peta Linux and I will show you how we can have JTAG connectivity so this is basically the usual setup that many people have um, and then as I will show you we will need Vivado lab solutions for JTAG connectivity to our board so what I'm gonna show you in this video is a very quick introduction to Linux key commands only key commands only key principles for Linux if you don't know then I go through installation process for Vivado and briefly I will show you how to set up the license also I will install Peta Linux under Ubuntu and then I will talk a little bit about Xilinx smart link cable and then I will show you how you can have JTAG connectivity to ZCU 102 board from within your virtual box so I, I don't have a smart link cable at home so I cannot show you this one in practice but the other one I will show you in practice so these are the contents I'm go going to cover in this video let's get started so here is my virtual box virtual box manager and here I have installed I have created basically a virtual machine and under this virtual machine I have installed and I am running Ubuntu which is this guy here okay creating a virtual machine in virtual box is a very easy to do step so there is nothing special I want to tell you about it there is only uh, one point that I want to mention is when you create a virtual hard disk make sure that you are giving it a fixed size if you keep it dynamic then it grows and grows and grows and consumes all of the hard disk space that you have okay so a fixed size storage with a size of 
let's say Vivado takes something near 20 gigabytes Peta Linux takes something near let's say 12 gigabytes and then let's say we have 50 gigabytes of projects and Peta Linux compilation data so a number between 70 gigabytes to 100 gigabytes should be completely enough for your project okay and then obviously we talk extensively about how do you share the folders between your virtual box and your host machine between your windows machine and your linux machine i will show you that this is very important so you create your virtual machine and then you run the virtual machine is it asks you for the ISO image of your operating system you can already download it from Ubuntu website one important point is um, the Ubuntu I'm running here is 16.4 okay I don't know if I can show this to you so yeah maybe um, the Ubuntu I'm running here is 16.4 right now if you download Ubuntu from Ubuntu website you can also download 18.4 if I'm not mistaken and that I have found that with the latest Xilinx tools they have some conflicts with that version of Ubuntu so my suggestion let's stick to 16.4 maybe it's not uh, that necessary for us to go to 18.4 okay so this is one point the other point is when your Linux is running so before extremely important is before you you create your virtual machine before you install everything it's very important that you make sure all of the drivers on your host operating system all of the drivers are installed completely fine if there's a GPU GPU driver is needed make sure you have installed the GPU driver it works fine if the chipsets they need drivers SATA controller everything that needs driver first make sure those drivers they are installed fine and then start creating a virtual box and installing Linux um, another point is obviously if your notebook your machine has a SSD hard drive you will see a clear difference in performance of applications being executed under your virtual box obviously the higher your DRAM memory the faster the CPU you will get a better performance so when the Ubuntu is running okay and you have done all of those steps and now Ubuntu is running for the first time one thing which is very important to do is to install the guest additions also you can um, you can install it using um, you can install it as a package okay so here I try to do that so I try to install this package and this is basically similar to inserting that ISO and then running those as scripts okay so I do this and even maybe this is better than inserting the ISO okay now this is done our uh, virtual box is our virtual machine is ready maybe I just reboot it and then this this is now a ready virtual machine for in fact installing Vivado and Peta Linux so let's go through some very basic facts for Linux something that you need to know so that you can be able to install Vivado and Peta Linux okay so we go through these very simple basic commands inside the Linux operating system so first thing which is very important is folder structure okay so 
here this is the file browser and if I press Ctrl L by pressing Ctrl L basically left Ctrl L then this shows me the path here on the Explorer window okay and slash is is the starting point of the file system so this is the this is the um, the point from which um, all of the folders get let's say started this is the starting point and your folder your files they are inside home and inside your username folder okay what's important is we install everything here inside our local user folder so if this is a system for which you are the only user then this is a good idea to just install Vivado, Peta Linux and everyone inside your own home local folder you don't need root access you don't need to run sudo command at the time of installation just you create an opt folder and inside the opt folder I have a Xilinx folder and all of the software, all of the Xilinx software is here. So this is this is in a point one. So um, inside my home, I create an opt, and all of the Xilinx files they go there. I don't need to run anything as root, and uh, unless unless you are, you are you have a computer that has several users, and all of the users want to want to use or SSH to this computer, then yes, then this is a good idea to install Vivado as root however so so one thing that I can do is is useful is when you right click here you can you can basically open the terminal and the very basic command that you want to know is list ls that lists the files and folders inside the current working directory okay so this 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 command pwd shows you where I am in the folder structure so I'm in my home and these are the list of files inside my home and I can I can create a folder very easily and all of these the, the can be done also with this GUI here so let's say opt2 okay so opt2 gets created here and when you create opt2 already all of the permissions are set okay so if I look at the permissions for the opt2 folder the owner of the folder is me and it has already all of the permissions that I need to use this folder okay so then I can easily navigate into opt2 with a cd command and I can easily create files and edit files with the vim editor okay now um, now let's um, vim test.txt okay and here is a small point maybe you don't like Vim because you need to learn how to use it um, another very good basically editor that I seriously use uh, during all of my work is Kate so um, if you don't like Vim then I suggest Kate and yeah every every good Linux developer has a suggestion for an editor and some maybe some, so maybe some people say Kate is not a good editor uh, for me so far it has been very good and I have really enjoyed using it it has some box but but anyway it's a good editor and I really like it so um, sudo apt get install Kate and then Kate is already installed and so I can use Kate to basically edit all of the files that I have um, so now when I want to run an executable all I need to do is to go to the folder of that executable and and call its name with absolute pass okay so absolute and relative passes so where when where i am right now i'm in a slash home a slash salary and where i am right now is slash home slash salary slash opt2 and the point is um, this is an absolute pass okay it starts from the root 
And imagine from here, I want to go to opt folder. So it's opt to, and I want to go to opt folder. How do I do that? I can enter the absolute pass for the opt folder. And so I'm in opt folder, but I could do something else. So imagine I'm back in the opt to folder. So I'm in opt to, and I want to go to opt. I can use a relative pass, a pass relative to the location that I have. So relative to the location that I have is opt. We go from folder up and then opt okay so um yeah so let's install three So this is the folder structure of my home folder. Opt and opt2, they are basically both of them, they are under, under my home folder. So what I did was I came one folder up and I entered the other folder. So this, this, is, this is basically all you need to know to really use the, um, use the um, Linux. And so one other thing is the copy command. But again, the copy command you can use through the GUI, and um, even also with the GUI. If I say you don't need to change the permissions of the files, this is unlikely. But even if you if you needed to change the permissions of the file, again, this can be done through this interface that you have here in the GUI. Okay. One thing which is important: avoid running uh, things as root as much as possible. You know, so try to run everything as the normal user. You don't need to run things as the root, okay? So you can change the permissions of the file here, okay? So that's it. Basically, the basics that you need to, to really um, use the Linux. Yes, there are some networking, um, networking um, configuration that maybe you, you want to do, which can be done here in edit connections, but... Um, Overall speaking, everything is um, can be arranged through the menus. One one very good um, file explorer that you you may like to use is Crusader. Again, Crusader. So Crusader is really useful. And um, so this is a very simple file explorer. Well, you can do all of your file operations here in this software. And also, the good thing that Crusader has is a search is a search capability. Okay, so if if I want to, who are these? If I want to do a search, um, I want to find a specific file, then I can use the find command, okay? Like, okay, so this, this was the command I issued. Okay, now maybe you don't want to learn how to use the find command, then there is inside Crusader, Control S brings up your search interface and with this search interface basically you can do exactly the same you can do you can do all of what uh, one can do with the find command okay so this is extremely useful and then it has an internal it has a kind of built-in editor you can copy delete create file directories you can do everything with this crusader um, very useful tool I have enjoyed it a lot during my life. Okay, so now we have, um, we know now Linux. We are a pro Linux developer 
and what I want to do right now is um, I want to show you how do I share folders between Windows or between your host operating system and your guest operating system so virtual machine between your virtual machine and your host operating system this is important because I'm gonna now download the latest version of Vivado and Peta Linux and lab tools um, in my host operating system in a folder and then I'm gonna share that folder with my virtual box and then I'm gonna install those files okay so I download the files and then we continue okay so for the packages the software that we need basically you can download them from this address in the vivado tab i'm gonna download the 2018.2 um, um you can mm, choose either this one these these two either one of these two or this one so um, this is one single file for all of the operating systems it depends what what you want to do how many times you want to install Vivado on your systems so this is very simple to download um, 17 gigabytes one file contains everything this is one thing we need and then also as I described briefly we need the um, lab solutions I will show you later why we need the lab solutions so also this guy or this guy if if your host operating system is Windows or Linux either one of these two can be downloaded and then finally for update one of 2018.2 you can download this file and then for embedded development um, we don't need this one SDK is already included in Vivado so that that one is not needed however here I download the Peta Linux 2018.2 installer okay so I have I have done this these downloads mostly here is the lab tools and I described to you my host operating system is also Linux and so if your host operating system your main operating system it's Windows download the Windows version so it's lab tools and this guy gets installed on your host operating system okay so if I have I have received from my company a notebook and this notebook is running Windows Windows let's say 10 then I download Vivado lab solutions for Windows and I I install that on my Windows directly okay this one Vivado SDK 2018.2 and this guy 2018.2.1 these two guys they will be installed in the guest operating system so if I have a virtual box and I'm running Linux there um, I, I, I first I install this one and then I install this one and then finally I install this one so it's important that I be able to share this folder with my virtual box and in order to do that I bring up the virtual box interface I come to the settings I come to the shared folders and here um, in transient folders I can add this folder that we are talking about okay so HDL downloads latest this is the folder basically I want to have there so choose okay and now this folder is here I come to my virtual machine and inside my virtual machine I mount this folder okay so um, it would be a comment like sudo obviously obviously for mounting I need sudo okay so um, for for running the mount command you always need sudo unless you have done some special configuration in the FS tab that so here mount the file system type is um, vbox sf virtual box um, basically shared file system um, the driver that needs to be loaded by the mount so that it can see 
those shared folders by VirtualBox Manager, this is this guy. And then the name of that folder, it was latest, the name of the share, okay? So here, here, shared folders, it's, its name is latest, okay? So latest, and then you just mount it to somewhere. Let's say I mount it to my local temp folder, okay? So, okay now if i if i go to my local temp folder i will see those guys i will see so petal linux is being downloaded right now it will be finished very soon but other ones they are ready and they are here and i can start basically installing this guy okay so um, let's install this guy so I have already extracted the file that I have downloaded from Xilinx. This is all operating system file. And all I need to do is to run X setup. Okay, so X setup. And now um, it, it may happen that you have downloaded the file, you have extracted the file, and there is no execute permission for this guy okay you need to add the execute permission yourself okay so this is not a big deal i can use the ch mode command ch mode plus execute permission the name of the file that i want to give it the execute permission okay so now i am 100 percent sure this file has execute permission so here the installer interface of vivado let's say we are angry with everything and <coughs> hmm. this depends on your license let's keep it design edition then obviously this is mandatory doc nav documentation navigator i don't like it if you want you can keep it i don't use it you can if you want you can keep it some people they like it i don't like it personal choice and for what what i'm doing right now basically the only guy who is really needed is this zinc ultra scale plus mpsoc and none of these guys are needed okay not the ultra scale with a2d not the zinc 7000 neither any of those seven series fpgas s portent 7 is also here yes and <coughs> so not those extremely high performance devices only this guy and if you are using an older version of ZCU 102 then probably you need to add this guy engineering samples for Zinc Ultra Scale Plus and I don't like any of these I don't like any web talk and I don't like he to manage the license key I will do that later so that's it and then the important point as i described is we don't install this thing in um in the main opt folder of the linux but we install it on um on the local um home folder so i don't so but as you enter the pass and you continue there is really no important point up to the end of the installation so let's cancel this uh you you need to continue i will cancel okay so now we are here 18.2 is installed and sorry and um now I need to install this guy, okay? Let's see what we everything with. So again, the same story for running setup, and this should be straightforward as well. So after we have a fully installed Vivado, I need um, a script, a simple a script which sets up the environment so that I can run Vivado. After you install Vivado, also an icon appears here for Vivado 2018.2, .2, 
probably you can click also on the icon to run Vivado. I have never done that. I, I just I go directly to the folder that I want to run Vivado there and then I call Vivado. But here I'm going to show you the script that I have um, to set up the environment to run Vivado. Basically, so there are a set of exports. Export in Linux sets an environment variable, okay? And I think these are no more important. In previous versions of Vivado, these exports, they were important. Otherwise, Vivado was always throwing out some warning messages. I don't think they are any more important. I don't know, but I have kept them. Now, the important line is this one in this script that I have written. And this, this guy is simply running a, a script inside Vivado, which is responsible for setting up the environment, setting up the paths, li um, um, library passes to libraries, and everything needed so that you can run Vivado. So this is one line which is important in this script. Another line which is important in this script is, is the um, line which sets lm license file so lm license file is the environment variable that points to your license the license that you have generated inside um, xilinx website okay so this script file that i have called vivado 2018.2.sh i have put it on my um, on the root of my home folder Okay, and for every Vivado that I am running on this system, I have one file. Okay, usually it happens that you need um, many versions of Vivado in parallel because when different projects come to you, each of these projects is created using a different version of Vivado. And although that's correct, you can always upgrade to the latest version of Vivado sometimes it's better if you stay in the same version as the other developers are working on this project okay so this is why i have many versions of vivado and this is script so every time i want to run one of these vivados i look which version i want and i source that a specific script like right now i want to run 2018.2 so i source this script okay and it doesn't necessarily need to be executable okay because you are sourcing the script and basically as you source the script um, those environment variables they get set okay the environment variables that I showed you they get set okay and this is enough so let me check it let me say ch mode minus x vivado 2018 source okay so if there's no run permission that doesn't matter and now as I have said these environment variables I need to go to to the folder that I want to do my project and then I just need to run Vivado okay so let's say, let, let's say I go to HDL dev temp this is just an arbitrary folder i don't want to do anything special right now and all i need to do is to run vivado i think this is the best way to run vivado not through those icons on the desktop i think this is the best way okay this is how i do it all the time so this is um we have a ready to use vivado inside our virtual box inside our virtual machine we can do projects um the very key step is jtag connection that i will show you later but now let's go to peta linux let's install peta linux then we go back to jtag connection so before you start installing peta linux make sure that your ubuntu um, contains all of the packages listed here um, which is in the peta linux installation documentation so these packages they will be required later when the peta linux is working 
so make sure you have first installed these packages okay so this is once the first thing i will do i come to my um folder let's go where we had so here we have the petal linux petal linux is completely downloaded um it's one file and it's basically an executable file okay so let's make it executable first of all i should make sure those packages that the petal linux needs they are all in, all installed so sudo so let's see how it goes okay now i should be fine to to run this file okay <clears throat> before that i create the folder under which i want to install this petal linux okay one thing if you are first time linux user this stands for your home so ba basically if i this this is basically a slash home a slash sadry and don't forget to if you are a guy who needs to run a lot of versions of the software parallel don't forget to it's a good idea to keep this here okay now we want to install petal linux okay so this is the petal linux file we have downloaded if your host operating system is also linux it's a good idea if you move this file somewhere else inside your guest operating system so i i move petal linux just somewhere i think inside my hdm let's say download folder i move it there okay the file should be copied now it could not be deleted but it should have been copied petal linux is here i want to install uh, to run this file all right so now we are reaching a step in which you need to see a set of license agreements so i press q i'm very angry then again another one q agree another one until next morning q active yes okay so yeah so i i am missing these guys i'm missing this and, and the the installation failed because i there are still packages that i need on my system and i don't have uh, let's go ahead and install them so so these are the additional packages that i need to install before i can install petal linux okay as the installation gets done i double check if the destination folder is empty and then i retry installing petal linux so i still miss two other packages i will add them also there is another one libssl dev okay so finally all of the requirements are checked and they are there so now it's installing petal linux this one takes a while as it is done we, are, we have basically vivado and petal linux together okay so petal linux is installed completely and um, we can use it okay um maybe i quickly tried so petal linux has is kind of similar to vivado yeah, there's a script if you source that's a, that script it sets up the environment for you so that you can use it now i don't want to start anything special but just i can see if petal linux commands are there so these are the petal linux commands and if the cross compiler is there so it looks like the installation has been successful okay so now we have both of these installed and i could go back to my presentation to talk a little bit about a smart link cable and then i talk a little bit about jtag connectivity 
so if you can afford a smart link cable something near at the time of this recording something near five hundred dollar this smart link cable allows you to get connected to your FPGA board through JTAG so it provides a JTAG connection to your FPGA board board and then from the other side it directly gets connected to network so anyone with connection to network any Vivado with connection to network running on Linux or Windows running inside a virtual box or running directly on the system they can through the network they can get connected to a smart link cable and then to the FPGA board so you you would have JTAG connectivity through smart link cable it's 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 a while we are using a smart link cable maybe kind of more than one year and this is extremely robust and fast and so if you can afford one of these this is awesome and inside your virtual box uh, when you are running Vivado simply you give the IP address for this guy uh, when you you want to connect to a target you give the IP address for this guy and then you get connected and you do everything you needed however a cheaper solution is basically if you if you take this SU102 even you don't need a platform cable USB the the Digilent JTAG interface is on the board and all you need to do is directly to connect with a simple wire the board to the USB port of your PC okay this is much cheaper than using a smart link cable the issue is if if you if you want to get connected to your board through from the Vivado inside the virtual box then you should share the USB ports of your host machine with the virtual machine and this is usually a painful you know it's painful it it is it will not work or it will work randomly it it takes time you know so how do I basically how do I connect to my FPGA board from within the Vivado or from within the SDK inside my virtual box the solution is a me is a layer in between and this is the lab solutions so what we do is we run the hardware server on directly on the host machine okay so if you have a windows machine running and then you have virtual box inside then you install vivado lab solutions the one that i showed you on your host machine and then from vivado lab solutions you run the hardware server now basically when you install vivado lab solutions you are installing all of the drivers and everything needed for JTAG connectivity to your board okay so i run the hardware server here and then all i do is from vivado within my virtual box i get connected to this hardware server through network and then this guy is connected through the usb cable to the board okay so i'm gonna show you this one i have already installed vivado lab solutions in my host machine so i turn on my zsu 102 board and then I enable the hardware server and then I run Vivado on my virtual box and then I show you I have connectivity from within virtual box to my ZCU 102 board okay so this is my host machine as I told you my host machine is a Linux machine okay it's not Windows but everything should be similar so I have the host machine and I have installed Vivado lab tools so I expect I would be able to first source a script for the Vivado Lab tools and then as I do that I should be able to run the hardware server okay now when you want to run the hardware server the hardware server comes with a set of options okay 
And to me, one important option is the listening port, okay? So when I want to run the hardware server, I would say hardware server minus S and then TCP and then one port, okay? And, and this port may be anything you want. Necessarily, it's not 3121. It can be like 5151, okay? So now the hardware server is running and basically now from VirtualBox I get connected to hardware server and from hardware server I get connected to my ZCU102 board, okay? So I turn on my ZCU102 board and I run the hardware server and now let's see if from within Vivado inside VirtualBox I am able to talk to my hardware server. So I'm running NAT here, okay? So the IP address for this guy does not really matter. The only thing which matters, so the IP address you can see with ifconfig. The only thing which matters is the IP address for this guy okay so from my home network the IP address that I have for this guy is 0 0.4 okay so the first thing I will do I will make sure that from within my virtual box I see the 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 host okay so this is the first thing you should do make sure you see the host Okay, now, I see the host, the ping is fine. So, all I need to do is to run Vivado. Let's run Vivado. So, source, this I have already described to you, 2018.2. And uh, let me go to a temporary folder. And from there, I run Vivado. Okay. So, here is my Vivado and I would say open hardware manager so here is my hardware manager new target and for the IP address I need to give the IP address of my host and then here 5151 5151 was the port that um, we we started hardware server with this port so so here you go you are basically you are connected to your zcu102 board um, from within your virtual box okay now let's do another very simple test i I wanted to check um, if I can see my ZCU102 board um, from uh, XSTV environment. So, so XST. XSTV and this is basically your this this is your um, debugging environment for the software and it's very important if um, you are able to also connect to your board from this environment okay so connect minus host Okay, so this is basically the, the, the same idea as the other one inside hardware manager. I get connected to the hardware server which is running on my host. And let's see who is there. Okay, so these are basically all of the CPUs inside my ZU9EG Zinc Ultra Scale device on the CU102 board. So 
so this is clearly showing you that from xsdb i'm able to and this is everything is running on their virtual box i'm able to connect to my board from hardware manager i'm able to connect to my board this is a, a good environment kind of complete environment through which you can do all of your project development and hardware and software debugging.